Bend and Scoop is brought to you by Harder Concepts, the best bars in North Dallas. Eat, drink, party harder. I love Bend and Scoop, man. You want to hear some music? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Well, today you're going to get all the music you want. The request lines are now open, KGFJ Soul Radio. Do it now, man. Do it now. Request, request lines, lines are now. <laughs> it's open, man. <laughs> Got any Blue Oyster Cult? No, I don't have any Blue Oyster Cult. I ate 34 pairs last time around. Where were you? It was that close to working at 7-Eleven, you know. Pass the word along. Tell the men it's time to shoot the moon. Shoot the moon! Not out there on the microphone. On the microphone. Shoot the moon. Shoot the moon. The attitude dictates that you don't care whether she comes, stays, lays, or prays. I mean, whatever happens, your toes are still tapping. It's strawberry! Oh, strawberry. Hey, what's happening, man? How you doing? This is my friend. Hey, how you doing, man? What you looking at, man? Oh, no, nothing. I, I wasn't looking. I was just... I wasn't looking at his neck, man. Can you honestly tell me that you forgot the magnetism of Robin Zander or the charisma of Rick Nielsen? That's kid stuff. Kid stuff? Well, how about the tunes? I want you to want me. The dream police. da 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 Build your muscles picking strawberries. You know, band of stoop. Maybe I can get you a job with United Fruit. I got a buddy with United Fruit. Start with strawberries, you might work your way up to these goddamn bananas. When, boy, are you going to get your act together? We're creating a society of cell phone crazed, marijuana smoking zombies. to you not quite live from lukewarm tallboy studios deep in the land of gar this is bend and scoop the podcast featuring music mirth and minutia focused on exposing artists you probably haven't heard but should i'm bob and i'll be your tour guide on this amazingly asymmetric auditory adventure as we journey to the center of your cochlea welcome to episode 59 bend and scoop is brought to you by harder concepts the best bars in north dallas Visit one of the five great Harder Concepts locations in DFW, which includes Scruffy Duffy's and Ringo's Pub, both at the shops at Legacy and Plano, Saintsbury Tavern at Austin Ranch in the Colony, the Mucky Duck at Addison Circle in Addison, and Addison Ice House at Vitruvian Park in Addison. All five Harder Concepts locations have great food, live music, an amazing beer and spirit selection, and a wait staff that's second to none. Whether you want to hang out with old friends or meet some new ones, there's no better place to get together and watch your favorite sports or hear some awesome tunes. Eat, drink, party harder. Joining us at the end of the show to play a round of Is That Your Vinyl Answer? and the Groovin' After Party will be our very special guests, Michael Armstrong and Jason McCall from the Our Favorite Albums podcast. We spread the gospel of vinyl here at Bend and Scoop, so be sure to tell us all about your favorite neighborhood record store by posting to at Ben Scoop on Twitter or Instagram using the hashtag Spin Mom and Pop. Our record store of the week is the end of all music in Oxford, Mississippi. You can follow them on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all at End of All Music. And you can check out their website at store.theendofallmusic.com. Opening things off is a band from Pittsburgh called T-Tops. I once had a car with T-Tops back in the early 80s. Love that car, man. This song is from their new album, Staring at a Static Screen. Try to say that five times fast. This is Savvy Man.
That was Honey Radar from Philadelphia from their 2020 album Sing the Snow Away. That's Telephone Betty's Aneurysm. Have you ever wanted to host a podcast? Well, all you have to do to join the Mike Hunt and host your very own episode of Assume the Juxtaposition is send me your topic idea to lukewarmtallboy at gmail.com. You can follow Assume the Juxtaposition on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all at AssumeTJPod. Here's a band from Milwaukee called Platinum Boys. Off their 2015 album Future Hits, this is Candy.
This is the first time rock music has ever been allowed in this country. So you're not just a performer. You're an ambassador representing America. And above all, remember, we've got to play by their rules. Martin, I've been practicing. How's this? Ist der Takt in Achsen, bitte. What does that mean? Is your daughter 18? band from Toronto off their 2020 album Good Time that was Trillium Song. How Many is a podcast where I get together with my friends Jesse, Junior, Gary, and Scott to debate a variety of pop culture topics, including movies, sports, TV, music, and more. You can follow How Many on Twitter at How Many Podcast and listen at HowManyPodcast.com. From Asheville, North Carolina, here's a band called The Tills. From their 2014 album Mixtape Volume 1, this is Full Blown Addict.
they still come down on us Just find yourself a meal ticket And someone you can trust They talk about Muhammad And Abraham and his son But do you all remember How the battle of Jericho was won They said that they could change us But they never had it right
Before he was in The Walkman, their lead singer was in a band called The Recoys, based out of Washington, D.C. That was from their 2003 album, Recoys, called Shake Off Your Nerve. Pausable Deniability is a monthly podcast I co-host with my pal David Miller, which you can follow on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all at Pause Deny. We post new episodes on the first day of every month. Well, Bob Pollard and his crew are at it again. This is his side project, Cub Scout Bowling Pins, from the brand new album, Clang Clang Ho. This is a great, great tune. Copyright 123. Explain. What's there to explain? But I just want Look, to say that... I'm not the first guy who fell in love with a girl he met in a restaurant who then turned out to be the daughter of a kidnapped scientist, only to lose her to a childhood lover who she'd last seen on a deserted island and who turned out 15 years later to be the leader of the French underground. I know. It... It all sounds like some bad movie. Get ready for another ride Mr. Lee, give me 
getting near Somebody said that the black boys are over here And then I heard a sound just like a firecracker Must be good old Jojo, he's a Mr. Pack And that little boy lying like a raggedy And they're just another weekend And they're snatching candy Cause we're going down From New Haven, Connecticut, that was Miracle Legion off 2017's Drenched. That was Snacks and Candy, not to be confused with the Marcy Playground song Sex and Candy. Not sure which I would prefer at this moment. It's a tough call. (laughs) Campfire Songs is a podcast where I get together with my buddies Todd, Jim, and Tom to share and discuss songs with each other. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Songs Campfire and give us a listen for more great music. And don't forget to stick around for the end of the show when we'll be joined in the Groovin' After Party by our special guests, Michael Armstrong and Jason McCall from the Our Favorite Albums podcast. Here's a band from Detroit called Co and the Knockouts. Now, you see it and you think maybe that's K.O. and the Knockouts, but no, her name is Co Molina. So it is Co and the Knockouts, and this is from their self-titled 2008 album. This one's Black and Blue. Back of a hearse Only thing I really 
everybody's a music expert. But everybody's not a stereo expert. That's why Sony has put together a system called Precision Balance Components. We put it all together to give you exactly the kind of sound you had in mind. So all you have to do is listen. Sony, the one and only. Another Detroit band there, Amy Gore and her Valentines from their 2012 album In Love. That was Send Me a Postcard. If you want to listen to all this great music without having to hear me ramble between songs, be sure to check out our Bend and Scoop Spotify playlist. If we played it and they have it, you can listen to it there. And if you enjoy listening to what we do here on Bend and Scoop, please take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review us wherever you get your podcasts. And if you really enjoy what we do here at Bend and Scoop and would like to show your support, please feel free to drop a little something in our virtual tip jar at patreon.com slash bendscoop. Considering how few people listen to this podcast every week, you'd think we've been keeping it a top secret. Oh, wah, ba, ba, loo, bam, la, bam, boo, to the fruity, oh, Rudy, to the fruity, oh, Rudy, to the fruity, oh, Rudy. Oh, wah, ba, ba, loo, bam, la, bam, boo, got a girl named Sue. Mm. She knows just what to do. Got a girl named Daisy. She almost drives me crazy. Got a girl named Daisy. She almost drives me crazy. She rocked me to the east, she rocked me to the west. But she's the girl that I love best. So do the fruity, oh Rudy. 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 A walk by the loop, I'm a lot bamboo. Looking for a video that will make you laugh out loud? Then catch Val Kilmer in this undercover comedy where East meets West. We fell down in my Guten Morgen list. What the hell did you say to him? Nothing. I just told him I put his name on the Montgomery Ward mailing list. Hillary. That's an unusual name. It's a German name. It means she whose bosoms defy gravity. Grenade! 
It seems that you have become, how do you say, indispensable? Indispensable. When the creators of Airplane and the Naked Gun set out to make a spy spoof, the laughs fall hard on the East German High Command in Top Secret. Listen to people. So listen, people. Welcome to the Grieving After Party. Come on in and pour yourself a cold one. Joining me now for our Grooving After Party here on Bend and Scoop are Michael Armstrong and Jason McCall from the Our Favorite Albums podcast. Welcome, guys. Hey, thanks Hi. for having us. So tell everybody about Our Favorite Albums. <laughs> so it's it's a funny thing when you take a couple of uh, of, of guys that like tunes. You're, you're a tunes guy as well. Yep, uh, I've listened to your podcast. I love the format where, uh, you know, your focus on indie, on indie bands. I, I think that's awesome. Awesome, uh, and, thanks, man. Yeah, and so J- Jason and I are, uh, we are very good friends. That we have joked that we have had our podcast shows for the past over ten years. We just now started recording. Them. <laughs> they were usually on the back porch. <laughs> yeah, so typically we, we we'd get together and cook some steaks and uh, open a, a bottle of wine or two, uh, or maybe some bourbon or whatever else we could get our hands on, uh, and we ended up just talking about tunes to the point where we would go into such depth uh, with albums. And see, that was our focus, also, right, Jason? Absolutely. I mean, that, that was the thing is we always enjoyed talking about albums, you know, the, the whole album, like the songs you miss on the album. You know, we, we, we like a lot of the same kinds of music, but there's music that we differ on a little bit. But it was always fun not just talk about the hits or the songs, but to talk about the whole album, because, you know, when you when you listen, when you spin the whole the thing front to back is when you get the real gist of what what's going on there. And so that's what we would do is sit around and talk about albums. Um, until far too late in the evening, usually. <laughs> so and, and, I were, and we're both musicians. So oh, really? Uh, yeah. What do you play? So, I play guitar. Yep. Okay. I, I came up on drums. I was a drummer by uh, by the fabric of, of my being. But uh, Jason kind of talked me into getting into playing bass, and so that that's kind of the. It, Everybody it's, needs a bass player in their social circle. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you guys have a band, or you're starting a band? What's the uh... We yeah, we play. We play. Thing, we get yeah. a we have a drummer here in town, and we we just get together and knock out awesome. some tunes occasionally. So, yeah, that's fantastic. Now, I listened to you guys. I went 
and I'm looking through your back catalog and said, what's the first episode that jumps out at me? And it was that hold steady boys. And oh, girls great. In America. Awesome. That's it's awesome. Been a, it's been a while since you guys did that one. So I know it's not one of the more recent episodes, but um, I got to tell you, I love those guys. I, I got all their albums. I saw them in concert. I even, there's a podcast. I don't know if you, if you guys have ever heard of a positive jam before. I haven't. It's a podcast these guys do. And season one, every episode was on a specific song in order from Almost Killed Me. Season two okay. was Separation Sunday. They did the same thing. Wow. And they had me on because I was uh, arguing the merits of Charlemagne and Sweatpants because that's a big <laughs> maligned song. One of them was saying that that's like one of their least favorite Hold Steady songs. I'm like, that's my favorite Hold Steady song period of all time. And so uh, we had a good time. Those guys were really, really good. And I enjoyed that. So uh, I, I was telling them, they haven't decided if they're doing season three yet. And if they are, if they're going to stick with the Hold Steady, I said, you've got to do Boys and Girls in America. And sure enough, you guys did it. That was great. And I was already lobbying with them. I'm like, I've got to do Massive Night. Let me do Massive Night. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I listened to that. And you guys, it was great because you also included some of the bonus tracks as well. Yeah. So, and, and Charlemagne, by the way, that character, she ends up showing up uh, in, in other songs as well. And so it, it, that that concept that they have where they're writing songs, I, I think that's what's so compelling for us as, you know, both as musicians, as well as fans of music and uh, where, where our passion comes from. You know, it's, it's one thing if you have uh, if you have this intellectual pursuit where you decide I'm going to be an artist and I am into my art and I'm so serious about it that, uh, you know, this is, this is what I do. I'm, I'm considered this artist versus just being good at your craft. And I think that's one of the things that Jason and I absolutely love about the album format, which may be a lost art. We've seen a, a, a renaissance of album listening just in the past few years with people understanding that vinyl is, you know, that, that's really the way that you're, you are hearing music in its fidelity as it was recorded you know you're you're not getting any dynamic compression on this thing uh if you have a good enough sound system you're hearing almost like the band is right there uh, and I, so, and I, yeah and i think to that point you know a, a band like the hold steady um just with the way that they craft their songs and they write their albums is so conducive to listening to front to back. I mean, this is, and yeah. I mean, the Chip, Chips Ahoy is like such a catchy tune, right? Why that isn't all, wasn't all over the radio is, is beyond me. But aside from that, even though they had some, like some individual tracks that stand out, like that album as a whole, just listening to it front to back is just such a better experience than just like pulling tracks out and listening to them one at a time. Yeah. Cause they always have a narrative thread that kind of runs Absolutely. through the entire yeah the entire record. And like you said, the recurring characters and they were, they recur across albums, not even just within right. the context of the yeah. album, but, and, and you guys did a really good job of talking about how they key on, you know, things from Minneapolis, you know, where Craig Finn grew up and, and just, you know, how, how you e even enjoy whenever you, I think you guys talked about the toadies, uh, you know, rubberneck and, and how right. those songs, you know, you bring to mind local places, you know, like Possum Kingdom and stuff. And, right, right. And you're absolutely right. It's uh, that's and, and Possum Kingdom is our backyard, by the way. We're 15 minutes from Possum Kingdom where we sit. OK. All right. No, no dead bodies have been found by us <laughs> as of yet. So. so you guys don't necessarily want to die. You just <laughs> right. live there. I don't want to die. <laughs> um, I, have a, I have a funny story about that song. Um, listening to that when my uh, my oldest son was probably four years old i was driving around in the car and i had that on and when they got to the point at the end where they said do you want to die do you want to die my son was in the back seat and every time they said do you want to die he said no <laughs> so <laughs> it sounded like background lyrics in the back of no 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 yeah, i can't hear that song without thinking of that at this point and it's funny because of that and then of course you mentioned tyler as well and the sure. thing about Tyler that's funny is I immediately always think of the city in East Texas and, and all that. And the other day, Longview by Green Day came Green on. Day. And I know <laughs> yeah. that it has nothing whatsoever to do with the city, but I'm thinking somebody ought to make like an East Texas mix. <laughs> like <laughs> put a Longview on there and Tyler. Was like, like, is there a Nacogdoches song we don't know about? You know, somebody's got, I don't know. So that's somebody should write it if they haven't yet. Yeah, so I, I, grew, I grew up in Dallas and it, Growing up in the late 70s, all through the 80s, Dallas, you know, 
we had the Dallas Cowboys. That was America's team. We had uh, the show Dallas, man. I just assumed that Dallas was the center of the universe. Right? <laughs> uh, and, and all of these, these killer songs that came out in the nineties uh, with uh, like you were talking about with Tyler and possum kingdom and then Longview. Yeah. man, I just, it, that only perpetuated my uh, uh, delusions of grandeur of Dallas being the center of the universe. Yeah. And it goes, it goes back even to the classic rock days. I'm probably a little bit older than you guys, but I mean, I grew up, um, in central Texas between Austin and San Antonio and yeah. you know, something like China Grove, right. That's a literally yeah, a yeah. small town. Sure. Outside. And of course you hear that. It's like, Hey, we live near there. <laughs> 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 I know people that went to school there, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and, and Jason, and I tend to be, uh, we, we tend to be kind of nerdy and we'll take a little bit of credit in being somewhat encyclopedic in our, uh, in our knowledge of, of music, you know, because that's just our passion. And if you have a passion project uh, that it's not just a vanity, you know, our, our podcast is not a vanity project where we necessarily think that everyone wants to hear our voices, but we talk about music and we research music and the way we consume music. We think that we can bring a lot to albums that a, you've never heard of. That's what it, that impressed me so much, Bob, about what you had is you were presenting music that people may have never heard of, but man, these are good songs. And the people putting those songs together, they have so much passion and this is their life or the other side that Jason and I approach, or maybe these are albums that were popular that, for some reason over years and time and distance you get numb and dumbed down and you get to the point where you forget about them and that zeitgeist of when that album was made that was where a group of people created this music and it was their entire world and this was going to be the thing that left an indelible mark on this world and that album was forgotten about and we yeah. want to go back and listen to it and go listen to the encapsulation of this moment in the in history of, of of time listen to these people creating this 50 minute album that, that you can listen to and almost transport your back yourself back to that moment well I, I love that absolutely love that yeah and and you make a great point because even some of the stuff you know, going back to the whole study, for example, that's something that, you know, we probably, the folks who listen to them think, oh, well, a lot of people in our circle know who the whole study are. And they're, they've got a fairly decent sized following for being in the indie rock scene, but most people don't know them. Most people have never heard them. So there's still, it's still one of those things where you want more people to know about them. So even the ones that seem like maybe they're kind of known, they're not known enough. Right. Absolutely. And that's once again, with the whole study that that still continues to surprise me that they're not bigger than they are. Yeah. They had a yeah, couple definitely. of albums that just are unbelievable and completely blow everything out of the water that came out around the time. So yeah, the, the songwriting itself, the, the way Craig Finn is able to write these songs and it's uh, real prosy, you know, sometimes he rhymes, sometimes he doesn't, that, that's really not that important. Uh, you know, that, that to me, that that's, that's poetry. He's, He's taking a snapshot of life and giving it to you as he's looking at, as he's looking across the audience, it's almost like he's telling the story of like, okay, look over here. That's Charlemagne. This is what's going to happen to her later on when she's got to go to the chill out tent, you know, because she's, she's gotten too hot or maybe the ecstasy's kicked in or what you know, just whatever the thing is. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and even his solo records, I don't know if you've heard any of his solo stuff, but it's, yeah. it's not as, rocking as the whole study but the lyrics and and the stories are still there for sure yeah same yeah, absolutely absolutely yeah you know so we, we just wrapped uh the most recent episode we did was on an album from 1986 that was xtc skylarking uh and that came about uh you know we, we recorded that it was good timing but Todd Rundgren is going to the Hall of Fame, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yep. Uh, and, and I had friends that are straight up music nerds that when they heard Todd Rundgren, they kind of, you know, like, ah, I kind of remember him <laughs> a little bit. This is a guy who's going to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You don't know who Todd Rundgren is? Uh, but, but why would they? Because that was from an era that they, that they did live in. And then they go back and listen to it like, wow, this guy had, a, again, a profound effect on the moment in time. Uh, that this album or these albums were created. And we really want people to go back and listen to not just the songs, not just pick and choose here or there, listen to this entire body of, uh, of this album to really get what was happening in this artist's mind. Yeah. His and Todd Rundgren's production credits would just stun you. What, what he's right. over there. I mean, like grand funk, Frank Zappa, um, cheap Meatloaf. trick, um, 
you know, he's produced so many varying artists. He, he worked, he was heavily involved with the band music from big pink. I think he was like an engineer on that. It's just the, the guys had such an imprint not beyond just his music alone. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. There's an interesting thing that there that happened there in the seventies uh, where you had guys that were coming from session groups, you know, guys like Glenn Campbell that came from the wrecking crew uh, that, you know, some people might not even know who the wrecking crew is. Well, Carol Kay was the bass player in the wrecking crew, which was this group of session musicians in LA that she was on something like 6,000 different records. There yep. was a time where every single song on top 40 radio, the bass player, regardless of what you heard uh, the name called out, maybe the monkeys, maybe the beach boys didn't matter. Carol Kay was the bass player on that song being played on the radio at that one time. Uh, I, I think there was a time uh, that I read one time where uh, maybe some Something like 30 of the top 40 songs at one time, Carol, Carol Kay was playing the bass. And so huh. uh, if you see that, that feeling where during album oriented rock, uh, you know, in Dallas, we had Q102, KZPS, uh, uh, which was, you know, this classic rock, these classic rock stations, uh, that that's where I kind of cut my teeth on and listening to these albums almost as a whole, you know, the great red beard, uh, yep. the DJ, the legendary red beard, um, it's it's really interesting that that still exists in my mind. Everyone always stays young in our head, but that moment in time still exists with albums being uh, the focus of, of the music industry. I, I hope that it comes back to that. I, I think sometimes these single serving issues of, uh, of music right now, sometimes it gets, you know, it's, it's, it's so easy to, to overlook because I think it's kind of trashy music, but um Go, go back to the album oriented stuff. And there was a lot of incredible stuff coming out of uh, the music world. Yeah. And I think the resurgence of vinyl is really helping draw focus back on that. Fortunately. I, I think you're right about that. Yeah. And younger people are starting to discover older stuff. I know, you know, my, my daughter, for example, she's started <laughs> finding some older bands and, and even one of my sons, you know, some of the stuff he finds on Spotify, even, like he'll, I'll be listening to something in the car and he'll just Shazam it from the back seat. <laughs> like, okay, check that out. And I'm like, Oh, I didn't even know you knew about them. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I did. So <laughs> there was a time Shazam my, that makes it far too easy to figure out what you're listening to. God, Kids I, have no idea how good they have it these days. You kids have Shazam, no idea what it's like in the old days. Yeah. If we had that back in the seventies, man, that would have been insane. Unbelievable. So oh yeah. Let's, let's learn a little bit more about each of your, own personal musical journeys. And we're going to play a round of something we like to call, is that your vinyl answer? And nice. we'll start <laughs> okay. off with, if you remember, what's the first record you bought with your own money? Uh, I remember it was ACD, ACDC's Back in Black. Okay. Wow. All right. uh, and do you remember where you bought it? Uh, I do. Um, I was, I think it was in junior high and there was a CD shop around the corner from my parents' house that I could walk to. Um, it was one of those, uh, in the, in the 80, late eighties, when they would do this, when you could actually take any CD up you wanted to and listen to it and they'd let you spend oh, it yeah. a little bit. And, uh, I mowed a lot of yards to go buy that CD, but yeah, that was, <laughs> I, I remember walking over there and getting my, my father had given me a CD player for my birthday that year, but no CDs included. So, ah. Got to build up that collection quick. Do you still have that by, by any chance? That I have it on vinyl now. Yeah, I, I'm assuming I probably have the CD somewhere. Years ago, I put all my, I digitized all my CDs and put them in a box before I got into vinyl. So I have it on vinyl. I probably still have it on a CD in storage. But yeah, Michael, how about you? I had the benefit of uh, my mother was a was a big tunes hound as well. Uh, she was a teeny bopper from the, the, the late '60s and '70s, and so I was. I had the benefit of having a lot of music from her collection and i had a cousin named tommy that uh he was a big music guy as well and so i had the benefit of having music around but the very first album that i bought with my <laughs> with my own money was zz tops afterburner oh nice there you go nice sleeping yeah. bag uh the sleeping bag yeah <laughs> and they had a song called planet of, of women that uh man it is really really not acceptable in these days of <laughs> no. me too but uh you know that, that was kind of zz tops you know raunch and roll you know that oh yeah kind of over the top barely double entendre but uh man that that album to me during that time that was right about the time that uh dire straits uh brothers in arms came out yeah uh, those two albums to me are just just so fantastic because again they captured that zeitgeist uh but i, I got that on on vinyl and uh i still still have it on vinyl do you remember where you got that one michael 
I don't. It was probably someplace in the mall uh, <laughs> it, it, at the Collin Creek Mall, which uh, is oh, currently yeah. being torn down. Um, so it, it, it would have been one of the, uh, it wasn't disco round, but it was something like that. It was, it was one of the, it, yeah, I, I, hold on, back up. Camelot, Camelot, Camelot. music is what it was. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Collin Creek, there's just a pile of rubble there now. <laughs> <laughs> i think they're putting in one of those mixed use you know retail and uh residential hey. kind of things well it, it, that's okay for us because our business is uh we, we sell retail software and so oh, good. <laughs> that's good for us we want as many retail stores as possible to buy uh, yeah, to bet. buy our software you bet um let's stick with you for a second michael who do you own the most albums by and which of theirs is your favorite radiohead i would be i i have a whole lot of radiohead Jason and I are both huge Radiohead fans. And as a matter of fact, we have plans for a, a series where we start at, we start with Pablo honey and we have an episode that just goes through every single uh, album by Radiohead. And the reason wow. we want to do that is we're both fans. We don't want to burn one of our choices because our, our format is we each take turns picking an album. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're going to do Radiohead anyway. So we're just going to go in order. Uh, I would say, okay, computer is my favorite album by them or maybe the bins it's it's tough those the, both of those are really good jason is radiohead also your favorite band i don't know if it's my favorite band but it's definitely the band i own the most albums of. <laughs> <laughs> funny all right so who which album of theirs is your favorite jason you know i actually have to go back a couple more than michael i'm gonna go with the bins okay all right nice. yeah, so they almost picked in love that raw aggression. english rock aggression yeah you know, those guys transformed so many times uh, yeah, just the, the craziness of, of, of Tom York and, and the Greenwoods. I mean, it, it's just kind of wild to watch, uh, watch how those guys transform. But, uh, man, I, I kind of thought you were going to go within rainbows there, Jason. I know it was, it was tough, but, you know, sometimes you just got to go back to the beginning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and sometimes with bands you love like that, it, it can change depending on what mood you're in or what day it is, you know. Which I, oh, sure. I, I, absolutely. Yeah. You know, the bins for me is that's one of those albums that I know that if I put it on, I'm going to enjoy it. There's never a question of mood or, uh, you know, what I happen to be doing. It's just, it's always been good. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Jason, is there any specific album by any artist that you've bought more times than any other? I know you mentioned you've got back in black on CD and vinyl, but is there any that you bought like, you know, on every format or that you had to, yeah, it was probably uh, probably Rush Exit Stage Left, their their live album. I've had that on every format that's available, and sometimes more than one copy Excellent. when they disappear over time. So that's fantastic. Love Rush, Mike. How about you? Uh, it, it's funny that you say that. I, I mean, as soon as you as soon as you asked the question, I, and I, I heard you on the previous episodes ask the question, but uh, immediately. I realized how many times I have purchased tools anima <laughs> because you know, when I first got it, like on a tape or a CD, they would get scratched or I would leave it at someone's house or someone would borrow it. Uh, but I would just buy it over and over, but, a close second, and I know I'm going to take it in the shorts on this one, uh, would be Depeche Mode's music for the masses. No, that's, that's a good one. That's, I, that's I, a good I, one. I, yeah. I would bet you I've purchased that album probably five different times on different formats. <laughs> Um, so for each of you, uh, starting with Michael, who has the biggest vinyl collection that, you know, and, um, if you have one, what size is yours? I, I do. Um, mine's in, uh, in the low hundreds. I, I'm, I, I keep a Discogs, uh, account. Let me think about this. Who has the most vinyl records? Jason's got a few. Yeah, my collection's the size of yours. Yeah. Um, I, I was probably going to go with you, Michael, as being the person I knew that owned the most vinyl. So. I'll, I'll give a shameless plug. Uh, one of our customers is Waterloo Records down in, uh, in Austin, Texas. So if that's the oh, case, yeah. Waterloo Records has so the most Waterloo vinyl. Records. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they're great. I was just down there a few months ago when the last time I was in Austin. That, that, that record store is a lot of fun. It's such a great place to go, man. And, and you know, that, that really is the cradle of live music, Austin, Texas. Uh, yeah. And that's, I mean, those guys are right there on the corner of, of Lamar and 6th. And yeah. uh, 
man, I, I can't imagine a trip to Austin if you're doing any kind of concert or anything and not stopping by Waterloo Records just to see all those old records they have. And I've gone in there before. Uh, I, I tend to crate dig on some pretty wild stuff. So I'm looking for old jazz. You know, I'm looking for Eric Dolphy. I'm looking for Ornette Coleman. I'm looking for, uh, you know, some of the stuff that's hard to find. Curtis Counts and, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Uh, and I, I think that I have at least one album from there that was on my impossible to find list. Just crate digging. So uh, the next question was going to be, what's your favorite record store? It sounds like it's probably Waterloo. <laughs> I think we both, I think we both yeah, just Waterloo. answered that. Now, now, having said that, there was a uh, there was a great record store in Denton on the square for a couple of years that closed last year during the pandemic, um, which name escapes me. But because my son goes to college over there, I did spend I bought a lot of records over there before they left. <laughs> it was nice. It was a reasonable drive, much closer than Austin. But, um, you know, and just there are. There's a record store up at Wichita Falls, just a war bonnet that's war bonnet, opened yeah. up in the last couple of years. I mean, they're everywhere, but yeah, Waterloo is by far my favorite. You know, Doc's Records over in Fort Worth. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been there, yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, that is a huge. that's a cool spot. Yeah, it's great because they have a lot of stuff beyond the records. They got like a lot of posters and and t-shirts and and all sorts of cool stuff in there. Yeah, there used to be a place in Dallas called was that Vicon Village. That had uh, it was it was almost like stepping back into uh, into time, where you could find like an old Kiss poster <laughs> uh, or something like that. Uh, and when I walked into Docs the first time, I think I actually saw a Kiss poster that was there. It was like, man, this is a music lovers haven right here. Yeah, yeah. And Docs has a great logo too. The I the vinyl IV hooked up to the guy. In the yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love that. I, I would say that the the place that I bought the most uh, most records for over the years has probably been half price books though. Uh, back in the in the nineties, man, that was such a great place to find used used records and tapes. Yeah, yeah. I, I when I was re starting to rebuild my collection, I'd hit up the, once a year. They'd have like the big parking lot tent sale, like, and everything was a buck. And it's just like <laughs> I'm just gonna just gonna grab as much stuff out of here as I can, you know. Uh, what for each of you guys is your all-time favorite cover song? Song to cover or song that's been covered by yeah, someone song in that's, particular? Song that's been covered, like cover version of a song. So like when you hear it, it's like that I love that version of that song better than the original or whatever. That's like Oof. for me, it's a Take Me to the River by Talking Heads. That's that's Hey, that's I, a great one. I love yeah. the Al Green version, but the Talking Heads version is just that's to me that's fantastic. A lot of people go with all along the Watchtower, you know, the Hendrix which, version, which is also the, great. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I'll jump in here and uh, go for it. <laughs> I don't mean to shut down the conversation, but uh, every conversation about majestic covers starts with "Hallelujah" by Jeff Buckley. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a great one. And if you can ever find, he did a live, there's a live recording of him on YouTube. And I think he's in Chicago uh, where he does this. Um, man, I, I have to stop myself from getting emotional thinking about it. But like his voice is so angelic. And the way that he's able to compose songs uh, is, is so impressive and it's so tragic that he was taken from us before he even got big you know he recorded grace and that's the only thing he ever recorded and before it really got big he drowned in a uh, in the mississippi river yeah and it, his version of hallelujah i mean I, you listen to the leonard cohen stuff and you can't even tell it's the same song and i know that rufus wainwright did a version of it and I, it's been covered over and over it's it's probably covered as much as yesterday by the beatles uh but man hallelujah is hard to beat as a cover it really is really is any other one come to mind, Jason? Uh, I'm going to go with all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> so, J Jason, I'm, I'm going to take over Bob's podcast for a second. Uh, you said something there that, that perked my antennae up. What is your favorite song to cover if you're playing it, though? Um, ooh, that's, that's, that's an interesting one, but I would uh, probably say Crossroads by Cream. Damn, damn, that's a good answer. Yeah, that's a good one. Really good answer. I think that was even one from uh, Freaks and Geeks when when uh, Jason Siegel was trying to join that band and they were auditioning him as a drummer. And I think I think Crossroads was even one of the <laughs> songs they were playing for the audition. 
Oh, that's funny. Yeah. You know, that's uh, we, we take a lot of pride in being Gen X. And uh, I, I wish more people would recognize the genius of Freaks and Geeks because that was like Gen X at the end of Gen X talking about the beginning of Gen X. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think that's a that's a really cool piece of art. A very underappreciated show. Yeah. yeah, that show was right in my wheelhouse because I was probably exactly the same age as like Sam Weir and the younger kids at that. Like they were like freshmen in 1980 and so was I, you know, like I, gotcha. that's, I remember that time vividly. It was like so accurate, you know. Well, in that area, that's you pretty cool. In, that's really cool. You said, you said between Austin and San Antonio. So are you talking like San Marcos? Is that yep. what you're talking about? San Marcos. So, yes, sir. I mean, th that area between Bastrop down to San Antonio, it, it's a totally different world now than it was probably when you were growing up because yeah. you know the, the suburban sprawl just kind of tends to meet on the edges now as well yeah exactly like it, you, there used to be you know significant amounts of like farmland between austin and san marcus and now basically from almost temple to san antonio it's almost it's a town yeah <laughs> it kind of exactly. is yeah and it's, traffic oh boy yeah yeah it's 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 austin traffic is the worst it's worse than <laughs> Dallas by far. Um, I don't know. I've, I've been uh, Jason's from Houston. I'm from Dallas, but Jason's from Houston. Man, I've been stuck in some Houston traffic that made me reconsider <laughs> yeah. decisions I've made in life. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, guys, how can folks follow uh, our favorite albums? And um, what's what's your typical release schedule? Are you guys weekly, monthly, or is it just kind of as you're able to get to it? We, we strive for monthly, but it usually ends up being as we're able to get to it. <laughs> yeah. It, and we, we tend to, we tend to, to really delve deep into our albums. And so, uh, you know, it, sometimes we'll get to it and sometimes we won't. And uh, sometimes we'll have a schedule and we'll say, okay, let's record this week. Cause we really need to get one out. You know, it's been a month and a half. Uh, and then, one of us will say, ah, you know, I'm not quite ready yet. There's one more thing I want to do here before we go through this. But uh, our, our focus really was to have uh, a monthly episode that's out. But hey, listen, it's art. You know, yeah. we, 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 are, we are suffering artists. We you must cannot run art. <laughs> You definitely can't hurry art. art. <laughs> you can find us at ourfavoritealbums.com. Uh, we're on all of the majors. So Spotify. Uh, Apple, Amazon, you name it, we're on it. Uh, on Twitter, we're Our Fave Albums. And on Facebook, Our Favorite Albums, all one word. But the best way to get, the best way to find us is uh, on Our Favorite Albums. And of course, we'll always take suggestions or uh, any feedback that you have at info at ourfavoritealbums.com. Well, can't wait to hear the one you guys just recorded. You said you did Killers Hot Fuss, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, folks, give it a listen. Great show. Love it, guys. Thanks so much for being on. It was a fun chat. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. Thanks Bob, for having we, us. We enjoyed we appreciate, it as well. I appreciate you greatly, man. I, I love your podcast. Love the format. I love the folks that you've had on. And uh, really appreciate the fact that that, that you are, are, are trying to revive people's love of music. Uh, I think that's something that we should never, ever lose. Uh, even as, as, as old as we get uh, in our lives, we should always come back to that basic carnal uh, lizard brain music in our heads that just kind of keeps us going. Hey man, we appreciate you having us on. Don't worry about it guys, it's all in the mix. Bend and Scoop is a production of Lukewarm Tallboy Studios. We will return tomorrow morning with the sun. Good evening, and have a good life.